Let's take a look at an equilibrium problem that comes from a grade 12 physics textbook. So we have a 2 kilogram chicken rests at point C, as shown in this diagram. Okay, so there's a chicken sitting on a clothesline. Okay, and so we have point A, C, B, and the chicken is at point C. And so this in this problem, the chicken is not in the middle here, so it's not a symmetric problem. Instead, the chicken is closer to this side. And so we have two angles here with respect to the horizontal. So this, this closed line is, uh, this part of the closed line is at 45 degrees to the horizontal, and this part of the closed line is at 30 degrees to the horizontal. Okay? And so the question is asking, what minimum breaking strength must the line have to ensure the continuing support of the bird? So to begin this problem, we will first draw a free body diagram. So we have force, ta uh, force of tension 1. So that's the tension in this portion of the clothesline. And it's 30 degrees to the horizontal. Then we have another force of tension here in this part of the clothesline. So we'll call that FT2, and that's 45 degrees to the horizontal. And then we have the force of gravity on the chicken, FG. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to resolve these two tension forces into components. Okay. So, looking at FT1 first, we have FT1x, that's the horizontal component of FT1, and FT1y is the vertical component of it. Okay? And similarly to this force, FT2, we're also going to resolve it into its components. So, FT2x and FT2y. Now, we're going to write expressions for each component. So FT1x is equal to FT1 cos 30. And the reason for that is because FT1x is the adjacent side to 30. So if we look at this as a right angle triangle, so the right angle is right here, this side is adjacent to 30. So we have the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, which is FT1, and that's equal to cosine 30. And if we rearrange that, we get that, so isolate for FT1x, then we get that it's equal to FT1 cos 30. So similarly for FT1y, since FT1y is the opposite side, so it's opposite to 30, we're going to have sine 30 is equal to FT1y, the opposite side, divided by the hypotenuse, FT1. And when we isolate for FT1y, we get that FT1y is equal to FT1 sine 30. Looking at the second tension force, so FT2, uh, it's fairly similar. So this side is adjacent, so FT2x is equal to FT2 cos 45, and this side is opposite, so FT2y is equal to FT2 sine 45. Next, we're going to find the force of gravity that the chicken experiences. So the force of gravity, the way we find it is we, we need the mass of the object and the acceleration due to gravity near the, surf's, er, uh, near the Earth's surface. So the mass of the chicken in this case is 2 kilograms, and the acceleration due to gravity near Earth's surface is 9.8. So we multiply them together to get 19.6 newtons. So the chicken experiences 19.6 newtons of force due to gravity. Next, we're going to look at the equilibrium situation. So in this case, since this is static equilibrium, so the chicken is not moving, 
So there's no there's no net force in the horizontal uh, dimension or in the vertical. So so in this case, what we're going to have is we're going to have f t one y plus f t two y since they're both in the same direction is equal to f g. So these two forces, the vertical forces, uh, so f t one y and f t two y. Uh, will need to balance the force of gravity in order for the chicken to not move up or down and remain at rest. Okay, so there's no net force in the vertical dimension. And so what we get is we get FT1 sine 30, so that's what FT1y is equal to, plus FT2 sine 45, is equal to 19.6, the force of gravity on the chicken. Okay, now what we're going to look at is the horizontal dimension. So we're going to, so the only two forces that we have in the horizontal dimension are FT1x and FT2x. And so since the chicken is not moving horizontally or vertically, these two forces will need to equal each other. Okay, so in this diagram, it may not seem like they're equal to each other, but it's not It's not drawn to scale. But in, in this situation, FT1x is equal to FT2x, since the chicken is not moving horizontally. And so replacing FT1x with FT1 cos 30, and replacing FT2x with FT2 cos 45, we get an expression uh, in the horizontal dimension. So now, what we do is we're going to isolate for FT1, and now we're going to have uh, two equations and two unknowns. So this is our first equation, and this is going to be our second equation. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute this into the first equation. Okay, so we're going to solve this system of equations by substitution. And so we're going to replace FT1 with FT2 cos 45 divided by cos 30. Okay, and then simplifying this, we get FT2 times 0 0.4082 plus FT2 um, times 0 0.7071 is equal to 19.6. So now we only have one variable, and we're going to solve for that variable. So FT2 is equal to 17.6 newtons. And once we have FT2, we can now solve for FT1 by substituting FT2 into this expression. And so we substitute 17.56. So this is actually a rounded value. The original value was 17.57, uh, uh, roughly. So after substituting that in, we're going to get 14.3 newtons. OK, so we've solved for FT1, and we've solved for FT2. So in this part of the closed line, the tension would need to be 14.3 um, newtons. Okay, so that's the minimum breaking strength uh, for the so for the line for the closed line to not break. And for this portion, um, it needs to be able to withstand a minimum of 17.6 newtons. For the clothesline to not break. Okay? Thank you for watching.